time for lunch. Yes, a la carte or brunch. It's time for us to munch, cause we have more than just a hunch. You could use a bunch, your stomach's in a crunch. So now it's time to break and have some lunch. Check it out. Breakfast of champions. What's up guys? You guessed it. This week's episode is all about food. It was always going to be a good episode. I, I always said the Great British Swim, it's just a giant eating competition with, with a little bit of swimming thrown in. But first, a quick update of whereabouts we are. Turns out the east of England is stunning. I had no idea. When we were looking at the Great British Swim, Devonshire coast, everyone was like, it's going to be stunning. Uh, Scotland, amazing. The Irish Sea. And in my opinion, the east coast of England wasn't really given much airtime, um, but just amazing from Hartlepool, Whitby, you know, to Scarborough, the people, the cliffs remind me of a little bit of the west coast of Scotland, but not as rugged and scary, like a little bit greener and softer. And, and also as well, like the fish and chips, strong. Which leads me on to what is fueling the Great British Swim. And it changes daily. I mean, what I have right now is very different to what I had across the Irish Sea, which is very different to what I had, you know, in Scotland. It's really not an exact science. It's more this adaptive art form and it's so fluid, but there are common themes. And those themes are firstly, you have to hit your calorie requirements for the day. You know, we'll be putting around 15,000 calories away each and every day just to fuel two tides. On top of that, not only are you meeting your calorie requirements, but you also need to make sure you're meeting your nutrient requirements. So yes, your protein, fats and carbs, but on top of that, micronutrients, phytochemicals, enzymes, everything that's going to support your immune system and making sure I don't have a day off ill is, is just so important. On top of that, it gets a little bit further complicated because I mean, we were a week to two weeks in when I discovered all about salt tongue. So all of a sudden you're looking at palatability. You're making sure that of those calorie nutrient dense foods, your tongue is also able to tolerate whatever you're putting down your face. On top of that, you also have to understand about digestion in that you can't have these incredibly high fibrous foods that require different digestive enzymes that will all be sort of swishing around in your belly when you're swimming for 12 hours. And then just to throw another curveball in on top of that, seasickness. So what I found is it's, it's so important for me to keep hydrated, but at the same time, I don't want lots of liquids all swilling around in my belly at the same time. A few people on social media have been asking me to go into a little bit more detail when it comes onto the nutritional science of things. Firstly, when we were looking at fueling the Great British Swim, you have to understand your body loves fats and carbohydrates as an energy source. Your body is able to convert them into energy far easier than protein. That's why fats and carbohydrates are your energy yielding macronutrients. So that's why on here you'll notice a lot of nut butters. I won't even spread, I'll just, I'll just eat this like yogurt. Superfood bites, literally. Mm. Everyone's swimming for 12 hours a day. Anything like granola feels like sandpaper on my tongue. I can't have it. So sometimes I just get the natural yogurt. Where's the spoon? Ugh. When it comes to Red Bull and, and caffeine usage, I'm really trying to use it as sort of effectively as possible in, in terms of the effective minimum dose. Starting each day, each tide, quite often I'll be looking at one can of Red Bull, 80 milligrams of caffeine. So if I'm swimming for six hours on that particular tide and 12 hours throughout the whole day, I might need a supplement aid like caffeine what I think is so often overlooked is also your need for vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, enzymes, which is why I'm religiously having multivitamins. But on top of that as well, even powdered forms of super green shakes. Just because if you look at the, the broccoli, kale, spinach, and you were to try and get the same quantities that are contained in this bag, but you were to get them in their whole form, I'd basically just spend the whole day with just a mountain of broccoli just trying to chow down. So I will have them in whole form, but at the same time, powdered form is so often my best friend just in terms of digestibility. So ladies and gentlemen, that is what is fueling the Great British Swim.
Uh, so whenever we come into a harbour or near to a town, um, the first thing that we think about is restocking. Ross, what he's trying to achieve is something very different from just being an endurance athlete. You know, he's getting in the water for four, five, six hours and then doing it again. We were worried because he didn't carry any fat at all. It was all muscle. We weigh him every week. Everybody said he's going to lose weight and uh, we fattened him up. Ross really goes through phases of food. Um, right at the beginning, it was noodles. Noodles, noodles, warm noodles. Noodles, there's just something about them. Warm noodles in your belly. I can't can't really describe it. It would always be noodles and it was like noodles for three weeks and we just thought oh this is easy we can always do noodles and we can always buy noodles. Something that was gone out the window and it was porridge. Porridge with biscuits and, um, and that was good that was easy and we kept on doing that and thought yeah I know he's swimming really well on porridge. Porridge is the thing and then it changes again. Actually bananas have been consistent. He never ever doesn't want a banana. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you to the little known hero of the Great British Swim, the humble banana. Um, never really planned to eat so many bananas on the Great British Swim, but it was somewhere on the south coast that we discovered the most efficient fuel source was the banana. And that's when Matt started to doing the, uh, the banana tally that is up to 554 at the moment. Um, reason that bananas work so well was, was firstly because of salt tongue. I found that I needed an efficient energy supply, carbohydrate supply, that like neutral in taste and soft. And, and, and I just intuitively kind of thought, banana, that's gonna be my best friend right now. Ross Edgley is eating a banana and I'm doing 5.5 knots. <laughs> Fastest banana in Great Britain. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to taste how fast? 6.7. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Pretty fast, aren't it? Oh, that's no. fast banana. Another reason the banana has featured so prominently on the Great British Swim is because they actually throw kind of well. If I'm swimming, Matt is basically right here and he's steering, making sure that we're going in the right direction. He has a bunch of bananas like that. He's able to just pin them like that and hit my hand from anywhere. So for all those reasons, the banana, I'll be eternally grateful to you. Thank you. Morning guys. Just woke up. It's midnight. I just had a cold pizza at the end of my bed. Now, I love pizza, but this is kind of representative of a lot of the fuel on the Great British Swim. It's far from ideal, but you almost have to train your digestive system just to digest anything and then go and be able to swim for, for six hours uh, on, six hours off. Is it breakfast? Is it lunch? Is it a midnight snack? You know, ultimately, it's, it's, just, it's just food. Okay guys, that's it for this week. As you can imagine, um, it's been a lot of fun filming this week's episode. I do love my food. I, I think one thing that the media has, has really honed in on is these 15,000 calories a day that I can eat on some of the bigger swim days. And whilst I too actually think it makes for a great story, I just want people to understand there is method to the madness. You know, there is method to having you know pizza with a super green shake in the morning. I started the whole Great British Swim you know, naive and, and much leaner than I am now. And, um, and speaking to some open water swimmers, they were saying, Ross, you, you really need to bulk up. And so taking their words of advice, before we actually got all the way around to Scotland, I was much heavier, much sort of rounder and chubbier. I always said, there's no blueprint for this. No, no one's done it before. And there's certainly no diet for it. Um, 
with retrospect, could I improve on it? Absolutely. And when I get back to Loughborough University, it's going to be amazing to throw around some of these, you know, training notes and nutritional notes and, and we can all start to learn from it and, and, and understand how you could maybe improve on it. And also, when it comes to my changing body shape and, and using myself as this chubby human guinea pig, if one of the legacies and one of the lessons from the Great British Swim is that everybody understands that your body needs to become an instrument, not an ornament. And I think, you know, the fitness industry is, is slightly going down the route where everybody's looking at aesthetics, getting their summer body, you know, six pack abs. Whereas my summer body this year is, has looked very different. And, and, and I hope that people understand that you know, your body should reflect what you are training for. Your body should be fit for purpose, not just fit, not just generally, you know, fit. Turn your body into an instrument, not an ornament, and make sure that your body has a story to tell. So thanks so much for watching this week, guys. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed, touch wood, next week I'm going to be speaking to you from back in Lincolnshire, my home county. But don't forget, you can follow all of my progress on the Red Bull Tracker, redbull.co.uk slash Great Swim. Until next week, I'll see you then.